On Friday, the 25th of December 2009, Lu Xiaobo was sentenced to 11 years imprisonment. Lu Xiaobo, the founder of the Charter 08 Manifesto, which campaigned for constitutional reform in China, was given the unusually harsh jail term on Christmas Day in an apparent attempt to minimize international attention. Following a year in detention and a two-hour trial, court in Beijing took just ten minutes to read out the sentence, and Lu Xiaobo was found guilty on the charge of subversion of state power. During the one year of detention, there was no contact possible with Lu Xiaobo and his wife Lu Jia, whom was unofficially placed under house arrest following the arrest of her husband. After seven years of not knowing how Lu Xiaobo was doing, a video was released by Chinese officials, in which Lu Xiaobo was seen taking medical tests and performing outside activities in proof of physical exercise he received during his time in jail. Along with the video was the message that Lu Xiaobo was diagnosed with late-stage liver cancer and was receiving proper treatment. On Monday, the 26th of June 2017, Lu Xiaobo had been given official medical parole to undergo treatment for late stage liver cancer. His doctors existed out of a team of eight national and international cancer specialists. Two of his doctors were the American oncology expert Joseph Herman and German doctor Marcus Buschler, who both visited Mr. Lu and issued a statement saying he was still strong enough to fulfill his wish to be treated abroad, contradicting their Chinese counterparts. But Lu Yongpang, the hospital's head of internal medicine, said that Lu's condition deteriorated shortly after the foreign doctors asked for an assessment on whether he could travel. And it is very, very uh, good that the doctors from China have asked us to come and to help. So they are very committed to the treatment of your uh, man, of your husband. They want us to help, and I think this is a very nice jest. Is, is she understanding English? No. Otherwise, I would, I would no. translate this, because no. okay. we have the impression that you really do your very best to help the patient. In just the 20-minute period of the examination, his condition drastically changed for the worse, Lu Yongpeng said. China's government rejected international calls to fulfill Mr. Lu's request to receive treatment abroad. Human rights activists and Chinese dissidents accused the courts in Beijing of stalling and falsely claiming that Mr. Lu was too sick to travel for fear of giving him a platform to speak freely overseas. The statement by the two experts shows that the Chinese authorities lied when the hospital released the statement. Contact with Lu Jia remained highly restricted through his hospitalization. On Thursday, the 13th of July, 2017, Lu Xiaobo sadly passed away by cause of multiple organ failure. On Saturday, the 15th of July, 2017, Lu Xiaobo was cremated at the Zai Funeral Parlour on the outskirts of Shangyang City. Only his widow and a few other mourners were allowed to bid farewell to Lu Xiaobo, and there was no outsider press allowed to witness the ceremony. The ceremony started at 6.30 in the morning. The mourners at the funeral included a brother of Lu Xia, 
and two of Mr. Lu's brothers, as well as their wives. But the identity of the friends of Mr. Lu's, who the government said had also attended the funeral, was unclear. Government issued photographs did not appear to show any close friends of the couple among the ten or so people at the funeral. As Mozart's Requiem played, Lu Sha first came forward to stand before his body. According to an official account of the funeral emailed by the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, she gazed upon him for a long time and murmured her final farewells to her husband. The mourners bowed three times before Mr. Lu's body, and Miss Lu and other family members bowed three times again. After the cremation, Miss Lu received the container of ashes and tightly hugged it to herself. Later in the day, Mr. Lu's ashes were lowered into the sea in a simple ceremony, ensuring that there would be no grave on land to serve as a magnet for protests against the Communist Party, and to prevent his grave from becoming a symbol for those supporting his beliefs. <laughs> The government released a video of Mr. Lu's family aboard a boat, who seemed to have a ceremony on their own. The family scattered white and yellow chrysanthemum petals into a pale bowl holding the ashes, while it was gently lowered into the water. Such sea ceremonies are not common in China, though Mr. Chang, the city spokesman, said it was a local custom. Mr. Lu, the elder brother, said it had been his idea. But Lu Xiaobo was born in Changchun, a city about 290 miles from the Chinese coast, and Shenyang, the city where he died, is about 100 miles from the coast. After the arrest of her husband, Lu Jia had been held under unofficial house arrest in her Beijing apartment. Her house arrest became official on the 10th of October 2010, when her husband, Lu Xiaobo, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Security guards were stood outside her home, preventing her from moving and communicating freely with the outside world and the police banned her from making or receiving phone calls or accessing the internet. The footage that we do have from Lu Jia can be counted on one hand. The most extensive video is a video where a group of human rights activists can be seen breaking into her apartment complex by running over the security guards and making their way into Lu Jia's apartment. After the funeral ceremony of her husband, Lu Xia disappeared and was not seen or heard of for around a month. On the 20th of August 2017, roughly a month after she was last seen or heard of, a video was published showing Lu Xia in an unknown apartment. I am recovering in a province outside of Beijing. I ask you to give me time to mourn, said Lu in the minute-long video posted on YouTube, a website blocked in communist-ruled China. Dressed in a black t-shirt and black trousers, Lu Xia was sitting on a sofa next to a coffee table while holding a lit cigarette. I will see you one day in top form. While Zhao Bo was sick, he also looked at life and death with some distance, so I also have to readjust. I will be with you again when my situation generally improves.
she said. Up to this day, no one has heard of her since.